You know, another thing that we really focus on is making sure that we've got you know, groceries for the deer. Um, that's just a key thing. There's only so much that the native land can can provide. And if you get in a stressed situation, and stressed to me would come in the forms of um, after the rut's over, it's you know winter time, and there's just there's not a lot of new forbs, it's dry. Uh, there's just not a lot of things for a deer to eat to gain that weight back that he's lost while he's been you know running five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand acres a day looking for girlfriends. So, you know, in that period and other periods of high stress, it's it's about providing a supplemental food source. Uh, that supplemental food source can be a multitude of things for people out there. Once again, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at our deer lease right here, right now as I've, I'm talking about this, we don't have a lot of rain, so food plots are out of, out of the equation. 20 inches over the last 20 months is not enough to have a sustainable food plot. So in, in that case, we create man-made food plots with protein feed. Uh, we use free choice protein feeders that a deer can come 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I do not like to hunt around those protein feeders. Uh, I want them to feel like this is a great sanctuary. They can come and go as they please to, to get feed. We feed uh, record rack protein. It's a pellet uh, form that really you can buy it in bulk or you can uh, buy it in bags, depending on if you've got to fill a 2,000 pound feeder or a 200 pound feeder. Regardless of what you're pouring it into, you're gonna gain benefit. You know, there's enhanced uh, nutrition that's gonna come right out of these. It's gonna beat anything that they're pretty much eating out in the pasture in those types of uh, situations where they're highly stressed out. So the end result of a free choice on-demand protein feeding program like that uh, using the, the record rack feed that we use is your deer are gonna be in better condition. Uh, they're gonna be healthier, they're gonna have a higher fat content, they're gonna have possibly even bigger antlers a lot of times. I mean, there's a lot of people talk about a 10 to 25% increase on the right deer uh, out there because of the nutritional benefit and value they're gonna get from eating a product like the record rack uh, out there. The other thing that I really notice is having a protein feeding program brings in a lot of a lot of other game. Uh, in this part of Texas, there's a lot of free-ranging axis, fallow, audad, and, and occasionally other species. I mean, we've got half a dozen to nine red stag running around on this property right now. No idea where they came from, uh, but they're here, and they really are drawn to that protein as well because of that nutritional value and the ability to eat it in, in tough conditions like we're dealing with now. So when you look at them, a feeding program, that's the, the base, that is the anchor, that's the end all be all, I believe, when it comes to, to creating a 12 month a year program uh, out there. And you can, like I said, you can deploy it in 50 pound bags or, or out of bulk, out of blowing it out of feed haulers. We do both and, uh, and really reap the benefits for a lot of our hunting situations. The next thing that um, we do is have timer corn feeders. This is more of an attractant but it benefits those wild game, once again, in, in periods of good and bad uh, conditions out there. The, this type of, a, of a, a corn feeder is synonymous with Texas. Now they're basically all over the nation, but really, if you look at their growth and where they exploded, it, it kind of comes out of Texas. I like to set mine to go off, um, you know, 7 to 7.30 in the mornings and 4 to 4.30 in the afternoons, adjusted for daylight savings time in the summer. And your feed rate will be based on uh, the consumption or the amount of game that's in that particular area. The benefits to your white-tailed deer are, you know, they're getting something uh, to eat, fill their tummy at various times. It cannot be the end-all be-all to their diet, but it, I mean, it helps them a lot. And it attracts them to your hunting locations, which is fun. You don't want to go sit someplace and never see a deer. And I know there's people out there that say baiting is bad. Hey, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. I'm gonna do it in a lot of places where it's legal because I enjoy to see a lot of game and I know the end result of a feeding program benefits my property and our ability to harvest some quality deer. That's kind of the multi-phased approach that I like to use to really increase uh, the quality of our deer herd, especially, uh, really no matter what, but especially in those times where the game is stressed. I'm gonna increase the, the amount of feed I'm gonna put out. When Mother Nature is taking care of good things out there, I'll decrease it, but I never, ever quit my feeding programs once I start them on a hunting lease.